Adonai is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. and wonderful Savior, our King, our Savior, our Redeemer, mighty God, hallelujah, Creator of heaven and earth, hallelujah, we give him praise, we give him glory, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the name of Jesus, we give God thanks, we give God praise, we give God glory for his goodness, for his mercy, for his grace, for what he has done for us, for what he's doing for us, and for what he's yet to do. He is worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. And we give him glory in the name of Jesus. Greetings, my brethren. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our teleconference service. God bless you for joining us. And today we want to give God praise. We want to give our glory. We want to give God honor for all that he has done for us. And before we're going to go into our topic of be of good courage, be of good courage. And this topic we have been on to for the last five, five weeks now. And we're talking about courageousness, how we should be courageous before God. So before I, before I start, I'd just like to have a short prayer. Father, I thank you. Father, I praise you. Father, I bless your holy name. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for all that you have done for us. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Bless everyone who has joined. And I pray you will be with us and lead us in this teleconference service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are discussing, talking about be of good courage and we know God wants us his people to be courageous and courageous we should be because our God is a, is a mighty God and when we know we have a mighty God on our side there's no need for us to be fearful of anything we have no need to be fearful of anything once we have the Lord on our side and one songwriter says, if it had not been the Lord on our side, where would we be? Where would I be if God was not on our side? So we have the assurance that God is on our side. And we have been talking over the last few weeks about courage, how God wants us to be courageous. And, and we talked about Moses, how Moses was courageous. You know, that when God called him and told him to go down to Pharaoh, he went down and he stood before the king, Pharaoh, and he talked and said, Thus said the Lord, let my people go. It took a lot of courage to stand before the king and make this demand. But God gave Moses courage. And Moses went down and we see what Moses did, taking the children of Israel out of bondage of Egypt into a land that God had prepared for them through the desert, through the through the desert, and through many pro problems on the way, but God led them in out of bondage. So we also talked about Caleb and Joshua, who were the two men that were with Moses, and how they took over after when Moses died. Then we had Caleb and Joshua were the only two who went into the promised land. 
because many of them was disobedient and many was mourning and blaming God for this and blaming God for that. Even though God took them out of bondage, they still were not appreciative of what God had done. So that many of them died in the wilderness. So we, these two men, Caleb and Joshua, was very courageous in that they knew that God was with them and they were prepared to go against the enemies and the arm um, the countries and the nation that stood before them entering the promised land and we also talk about david who was a man of courage how david was courageous in order to go up against the philistine um goliath you know when all israel feared but david had courage he took courage to go up against the lion against Goliath because God was with him and because he trusted God but today we're going to talk about Daniel we had spoken about the three Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego also who without fear disobeyed the commandment of Nebuchadnezzar to bow before the image that he had set up but boldly went and stood and said, we will not bow before any graven image because it was the law of Moses that we should not serve any graven image. And so they stood by the word of God and how God delivered them out of the fire furnace. So we've covered all those topics. Now this today I would like to cover this man named Daniel. Daniel, taken from the book of Daniel, and I just want to read some verses from the book of Daniel, chapter 6. And it says, It pleased Daniel to set, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over the three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes because he was an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom but they could not find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find no occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then the president and the princes assembled together to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and governors and the princes and the counselors and captain have consulted together to establish a royal salute and make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man in thirty days save thee o king shall be cast into the den of lions now o king establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the medes and persians which alter it not Wherefore, King Darius, sign the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, and he was as he did aforetime. Then these men, these assembled, 
and found Daniel praying, making supplication before his God. They came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of God or man within thirty days, save thee, O king, shall be cast in the den of lions? The king answered and said, This thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they, and said unto the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regard not thee, O king, nor the decree which thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased with himself, and set his heart upon Daniel to deliver him. And he labored this till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree, no statutes with the king establish may be changed. Then the king commanded and bought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was bought and laid at the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet. And with the signet of the lords that proposed might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went into the palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instrument of music brought before him, and he slept and he slept went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, is that is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? And Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocently were found in him, and also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Then the king, the, then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the lion's den. So Daniel was taken up out of the lion's den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, neither because he believed in God. And the king commanded that they bought those men which accused Daniel that they should be cast into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lion had a mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces. 
are ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto the people, nation, language that dwell all upon the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall even be unto the end. He delivered and rescued and worked signs and wonders in heaven and earth, and has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered in the realm of Darius and his reign of Cyrus the Persian. Praise God, bless the Lord and his wonderful words. And this is a very wonderful story of a man of courage who believed in his God, a man who knew his God and knew what his God could do. And he was very courageous in that the decree was made and when he knew the decree was made it did not he was not fearful and something we want to look at the character of who Daniel was Daniel was in verse 3 it was a born of royalty or some nobility because in verse 3 it says the king ordered Azarias and the chief of staff to bring to the place some of the young men of Judah family, royal family and other noble family who has been brought to Babylon as captive. So when they were taken captive they, the king ordered that they should bring the chief and the royal people from Judah of royal family and noble families so when they were taken captive, they were looking for the best of the best. And he also went on in verse 4 saying they selected only strong, healthy, healthy and good looking young men to make sure that they were versed in every branch of learning. So all these characteristics was part of Daniel's characteristic. He was of royal family or noble family and he was also wealthy, healthy and all the good things. But you know what we have to look at is um, he, it says in the in verse 1 in the play, please, it pleased Darius to set Daniel. He put Daniel over 20 120 princes so he was above all the princes which was over the kingdom and over the presidents so Daniel had a very high position in 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 the kingdom and so we see because of his position and not only because of his position but because he was a god fearing and God loving man. You know when we when we love God, God does favor us. And because Daniel was a man who loved God, God favored him in the eyes of Darius, who was the king of that time. And Darius favored him and put him above all his princes and his presidents. So he was favored by man. Because God put that favor in him, in the king. But the residents, it says, Then the residents, the princes, sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find occasion or fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error nor fault found in him. So 
they could not find any fault in Daniel. You know, it's good when we can live among men and they can look at us and, and they can't find any fault. You know, it's a wonderful thing. Even when we think about Job, there was no fault found in Job. And yet, look what he went through. But this Daniel, it said there was no fault. They tried to find a fault, but he was walking so circumspectly. He was walking so carefully that they could not find any fault with him. He spoke right, he walked right, he did everything right. And they was trying to find something to blame him for, but they couldn't find anything. It says in verse 5, Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion of fault in Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto the king, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and the governor and the princes and the counselors and the captain have consulted together to establish a statue and to make firm a decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any man, any god or man in thirty days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. See how the devil can use people to be cunning against God's people. They gathered all the noblemen of the kingdom. They gathered the presidents, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains, all come together against one man because they were jealous of Daniel, because the king found favor in Daniel, and he, the Bible says, in Daniel was an excellent spirit. In Daniel was the spirit of God moving, guiding, leading, and everything was just right. And the king was pleased. And he said the king wanted to put him over the entire realm, over his kingdom. He, the king wanted to exalt him as his next, you know, like his next in line. But the men were jealous, evil men. And they made a plan to make a decree, to tell the king to sign a decree that no man should ask of any man, a pit, ask petition of any man or God in 30 days. Because they knew Daniel would pray. They knew Daniel loved his God. They knew Daniel was committed to his God. And the only thing they could find against him was against the, his, 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 his determination to serve and to pray to God. And that's the only thing they could find. And they went before the king and they said, Now the king established this decree that no man should make a petition to any man or God within 30 days except the king himself. And he signed the decree. He signed that decree. And that decree, decree says, According to the law of the Medes and Persian, it cannot be altered. Once the king signed it, it cannot be altered. Even the king cannot alter it once he signed the decree. 30 days. No man should pray to the living God. But Daniel was a man of courage. You know, Daniel was, he was just a righteous man. He was a God-fearing man. He was a God-loving man. And so... In verse 10 it says that when Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open and his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees. He knelt down on his knees three times a day 
morning, noon, and night, and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did before time. So Daniel was so committed that he, nothing could move him. A decree said that no man should make a petition against any God, no man, in 30 days. That means no man in the province was allowed to pray. For if they prayed to God, they would have broken that decree. And the penalty for breaking that decree was to be cast into a den of lions. Now let's look at what a den of lions can be. Just look at the potential of a den of lions. Just think of what it would be that without God, without the power of God, without the presence of God, without the protection of God, take any man and throw them into the den of lions. And what would their end be? And the only thing that could save Daniel from the den of lions was God Almighty. The only thing that could save Daniel from the den of lions was the God who he prayed. He went down on his knees and prayed three times a day. He prayed. And he knew that this God who was, he was praying to was a God who healed and answered prayer. He knew the God who he was praying to three times a day was a God who could save him from any situation. When he knew that this, the king had signed the decree, it didn't shake him. He wasn't fearful. <laughs> he was confident that who he prayed to was a God who answered prayer. And it says, when he heard that the decree was signed, he went up into his house and his windows being opened. Now look at that. He wasn't hiding, uh, hiding to say, well, okay, let no one see me when I pray. Let me close my window and pray to God. He wasn't careful whether they saw him or not. He did what he did before time, before the decree was signed, he used to pray in this manner and he says, I'm going to pray in the same manner. You see, when we know God and when we know what God can do, there's one thing that no man should stop us from doing. That no man, no living man on earth can stop us from praying to God. No man. And we should have that attitude that no man... No man can stop us from calling upon the name of God, from calling upon God. No man, nothing, no threat, no threat. It doesn't matter what the threat is. I have had the experience many years ago. I was held up. And I was looking at death in the face. And they were told, I was told not to say, not to speak. But I said to myself, no man, no man has the power to stop me from calling to God. And I call upon God. I call upon the Lord. I said, Lord, you see my situation. I know you're able to deliver me. Even though they say, don't speak. But I know. And Daniel knew that he can talk to God and nothing should stop him. Nothing, no one can stop us from communicating with our God. And Daniel had that assurance. And he did at full time, open his windows. His windows being open towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees and he prayed to God. And he was giving God thanks for life. 
He was giving God thanks for what God had done. He was asking God to keep him and to preserve him. And then it went on to say the men, these men assembling and found Daniel praying. They was watching him. They wanted to see what he would do. Would he honor the decree of the king or would he continue to serve in God? And sometimes we have to make a choice. Because sometimes in this world we say the, the authorities make so much laws, so much decrees, so much laws, and some of them are against the will of God. And we should be able to separate the will of God against the will of man. Not everything that we are told to do by the authorities we should follow. Because many of them, this in this instance we can see that the decree that Darius was made was against the will of God. And Daniel knew who he was serving. So it says, Then the men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before God. And they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of God God or man in within 30 days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. And the king answered and said, This thing is true according to the law and the means and perjury which cannot be altered. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, That Daniel, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree which thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. So now they think they've got Daniel covered. Those evil princes and governors and all those that rule, they thought they had him covered. They're going to, they, you know, sometimes when people are thinking that they've got us and we are down, God ain't ready for us yet. When God is ready to lift us, they, they're going to be shocked because God has a time. Even though these evil governors and princes and all those men wanted to destroy Daniel, God has a way to turn it around. So the king answered these words. He was so displeased with himself. The king, was, the king was displeased with himself because he loved Daniel. And he cared so much for Daniel. Daniel was, he, he had a love for Daniel. He wanted to make Daniel ruler over all the realms. But he was sad now that he, Daniel is disobeying the, 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 the decree that he made. And Daniel was making put, petition to his God. And he blamed himself because he did not want this to happen, but he already signed the decree. So he couldn't go back on it because the, the, the decree of the, could not be altered. The law of the Medes and the Persian could not be altered, so he had to stand by it even though he didn't want to. But it was already signed. And this is how the governors and princes and caught him, caught the, prince, the king trapped him that he could not get out of the trap and he labored till he was going down on the sun the, the, the king was trying to find a way not to throw down um, Daniel in, in the lion's den he was trying to find how can this be avoided he said he labored he tried maybe he got counsel from from his prince, maybe got counseling to say, how can, how can I be, how this can be changed? I don't, I don't really want to show Daniel in the lion's den because I know what could happen, how the lions may tear him to pieces. And I did not want this. So he labored and he went on to say, these men assembled unto the king and said, no, O king, the law of the Medes and Persian cannot be altered. So they were rubbing it in. He has to go into the den of lions. They said he has to go into it because you already signed the decree. You cannot reverse it. And no decree or status the king exclaimed may be changed. It cannot be changed. 
then the king had to submit, even though he didn't want to, he submit. The king commanded and bought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake unto Daniel and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. So even though the king was a heathen, he was not a God-fearing man, but he, he believed in the God that Daniel served. Because Daniel, we can see when we walk so perfect before God, people see God in us. And this king, even though he did not know God, but he could see God in Daniel. He could see God through Daniel. He said, Thy God whom thou serve. He said, it's like he's saying, I don't know your God, but I know you serve a true God. And he will deliver thee. How wonderful is that? That Daniel could live a life that the king could see his God through him. And he says, so he was a bit, the king was even though he didn't want to, but he was still comforted that he believed that God, Daniel served a true and living God. And that true and living God who Daniel served was able to deliver him. So he, may, he kind of gave himself some comfort there. And a stone was bought and laid in the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with the signet. And with the signet of his lords that proposed the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. And the king went into his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither was instrument of music brought before him, and he, and he slept, and he slept went from him. The king didn't want to do it. All night the king sat up. He could not sleep. He said, what is this have I done? I have cast an innocent man into the lion's den. I was tricked into it, but there's nothing I can do. But he said, I'm going to fast. He said, I will be fast. I will, I will fast from food and from music. None of that. And I'm going to stay awake. And he stayed awake all night. Sleep went from him. He could not sleep. And then, then it says, The king rose early in the morning. The king rose early in the morning. He was anxious to see what he would see. He was anxious to see if the lions had devoured Daniel. He woke up, he, woke, he rose early in the morning, got up out of bed and went in haste. He hurried. Oh my, it's morning, daylight. I'm going to see if Daniel's God would deliver him. Oh, praise the Lord. But we sing, Daniel's God surely will deliver. Daniel's God, and you know Daniel's God is our God. He surely will deliver. The king rose up early in the morning, went in haste into the lion's den. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. It's like he was crying in his voice. You know, he had so much emotion. He was crying in his voice. He said, oh, Daniel, Daniel. He said, Daniel. And the king spake unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God. Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, is your God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lion's den. Glory be to God. Can you imagine the king? Getting up early, he didn't sleep all night, but he get up early and he will make haste to the lion's den. He was so committed to Daniel. 
And he said, he cried with a lamentable voice, Daniel, the servant of the living God. So he recognized now that Daniel was serving the living God. And Daniel said, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God, my God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they would not hurt me for as much as before him innocence see was found in him. My God. Daniel said, my God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth. And can you imagine? I don't know exactly how much lions was in the den, but it was more than one. It was a few. And in other circumstances, without God, Daniel would have been consumed. But because God was on his side, you see, when God is on our side, when God is on our side, as the other Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? God, Daniel's God was for him, and the lion could not be against him. Because the Lord sent his angels and locked the lion's mouth. And even the lions could not do nothing. Because Daniel stood upon the word of God. He prayed to God. He knew the God he served. And he prayed as before time. Three times a day he opened his window towards Jerusalem and prayed. Because he knew his God. When we know our God, when we realize the power of our God, we should not be fearful of anything what man can do unto us. Because God has the final say. Any situation, whether we go into the fire or into the lion's den, whatever the circumstances, if we go through the flood, even like Jonah went into the flood, into the water, into the whale's belly, and God was able to deliver him. What can't God do? All God wants us to do is trust in him. All God wants us to do is lean on him and not lean on our own understanding. It says in verse 23, the king, the king, then the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanding that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man, no manner of hurt was found on him, because he believed God. The lion didn't even come near him. The lion didn't even touch him. They may have come near him, but they couldn't touch him. They couldn't touch him. This is true, this is real. What God can do. And all this is for our admonition and for our learning. To know whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. That God is able to deliver. God is able to bring us out. And God delivered Daniel from the den of lions. The hungry lions. And how do I know the, how do I know the lions were hungry? How do we know that the lions were hungry? The king commanded that they be bought men who, that accused Daniel that they be cast into the den, den, into lion, den of lions. Then the children and the wives, and their children and their wives, and the lion had mastery over of them and break their bones into pieces and they came and they came at the bottom of the den, as they came to the bottom of the den. So the lions were hungry. Because all those princes and governors that accused Daniel, the king commanded that they should be bought 
and thrown to the lions. And the lions had mastery of them. The lion consumed them. So the lions were hungry. But they could not touch Daniel. It's like three Hebrew boys. The men that threw the Hebrew boys into the fire, they were consumed by the fire. But the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not, con they were not the here on their hands was swinged. That is the God we serve, brethren. What a God we serve. What a great God we serve. And then the king made a decree that he could make a decree that all in people, the nation, the language that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied. I make a decree that every dominion of my kingdom men tremble at the fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescued it, and worked signs and wonders in the heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lion? So Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, and the, and the reign of Cyrus of Persia. Daniel prospered. Now Daniel was said that it was unlikely that Daniel ever married was ever married, so he must have been a eunuch, because in verse twenty and verse eight it says some of the some of the own son that was taken exile became eunuch, who served the palace of Babylon's king. So he might have been a eunuch, Daniel, because there was no, we think maybe he was never, never married. Also, when the, the outline of the various region, Daniel's book compared that we know of the history books and of the pinpoint Daniel as around 80 years old when he was thrown into the lion's den. So he was quite a mature man. The total length of Babylon captivity was 70 years and Daniel was about 10 years when he was captured and 80 years old when the king Tyrus took over. So he could have been 80 years old when he was thrown in the lion's den. And then it says, um, the Bible has no negative insight of, ba of Daniel. He, he, was, he, he was a man who walked in the principle of God, and he was a man who served God. We know by his dedication and his prayer. And then it says, um, then the uh, administrator and high office began searching for fault. They could not find no fault in him. So they had to find fault with his relationship with God. But brethren, we just need to stand upon God's word. Stand upon his promise. God will deliver. He will, God, Daniel, God surely will deliver. We need to be fearless against anything that come up against our God that challenge our God because our God cannot be beaten. He cannot be, he is invincible. He cannot lose a battle and he will defend us who trust in him. Praise the name of the Lord. What a wonderful God. What a mighty God when we trust in him, when we lean upon him. Daniel, God is our God. We have proven over and over what God has done for his people who trust in him. As we talk about Moses, Moses trusting in God, God brought him out of, bring out, use him to bring out the children of Israel out of Egypt. 
with a mighty hand. God did not fail Moses. And we talk about Caleb and Joshua. How they believed God and they said, we can possess the land, even though everyone is saying, oh, we cannot go up against this nation. We are like grasshoppers before the nation. And God said, we must go forward. God said, go forward. Caleb and Joshua said, we will go forward. Our God is able to deliver. And then we talk about David, the man of courage. When no one was able to go up against the giant Goliath, David said, I will go up. Brethren, God wants us to be courageous. God wants us to be courageous, to stand upon his word, to say, thus say the Lord. Say, I'm standing on the promises of God. And last week we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when Nebuchadnezzar made that great image of gold and said, when at time you hear the sound of the fruit and the sackbut and the dulcimer and all sort of music, bow down before this image. The boy said, we will not bow down. Even though they, Nebuchadnezzar said the fire must be heated seven times, they said, we will not. But God wants us to stand up on his word, brethren. God wants us to stand up on his word. And look what God did to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look what God did to Daniel. He is the same God. He can do it for us. He is the same God. He can do it for us. He will do it for us. He will not fail us. He cannot fail. If we go from Genesis to Revelation, there is no way where God has ever failed anyone. I would like, I would challenge anyone to show me a passage in the scripture where someone believe and trust in God and God let them down. I challenge anyone. I am not a gambler, but I would challenge anyone. I would challenge, and if anyone, anyone can show me a scripture where God has failed anyone that trusted in him, please show me. Show me. So my brethren, God bless you. We come to the end of this part looking at Daniel and the lion's den and you know, what God done for Daniel, God can do for us. God cannot lose. God cannot fail. He just cannot fail. So whatever the condition that we find ourselves against in life, let us know that God, our God, can deliver. Our God will not fail us. Our God will bring us out if we only stand on his word. Stand on his promise, obey his voice, serve him, and we will not be ashamed. None that wait upon the, the Bible says, none that wait upon the Lord shall be ashamed. Amen. I'm going to stop there. God bless you, everyone. Pastor Winston, God bless you. Um, um, PT, God, Sister PT, God bless you. Mother Mills and Sister uh, Mr. Kelsey, Sister Brina, God bless you all, Sister Rose. God bless everyone and may you have a one a wonderful week trusting in the Lord. Um Pastor Winston, are you there? God bless you, sir. Glad good to have you. Um maybe you can give us a little word of encouragement before I close. Yes, sir. Greetings, greetings, everyone. Greetings, sir. Greetings. Greetings, everyone on this platform. Yes, we serve a wonderful God. Amen. Awesome God. And today we have a wonderful time in church today. The peace of the Spirit of the Lord is moving. Amen. I just love to be in the presence of the Lord. I just love to study the Word. I love to meditate books. Word. The word brings light. The burn word will defend me from the end of enemy. And he will come on me and he keep me strong. The word is done. Because the Bible said the word becomes flesh 
and do them amongst men and bear them glory. Hallelujah. And he will take a message on the word and use it in time of need. In, in Psalm 13, and he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. Mm. He lets me still water. He struck my soul. He let me part of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For though I meet me, that when I starve, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Mm. Now I touch my head with oil. My cup ready to over. Now you prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemies. That I don't know that my head with all. My cup ready to over. So all the goodness and mercy shall find me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in that house. Amen. I have nowhere to go. I don't want to go to the pub. I don't want to go to the football match. I don't want to go to the theater. That's not me. That's not us. That's not us. That, 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 that's not us at all. No one. You want to be in the house of the Lord. I want you to put on the Lord. Because the present is full of love, joy. And he writes out from there. Pages forevermore. Yeah. Let us go into the other Lord. Let us go to worship God. Can you do that worship God? More so you can inspire and ensure. This is my life. This is what I love to do. This is my joy. This brings me peace. I, I, don't forget the assembly. Don't forget the assembly. Um, assembly of yourself. Amen. And do you and don't forget to assemble and assemble. Don't forget and also don't forget to go some people don't like to go to church. But I love church. Yes. And it's fourth for Sunday. Because the church inspire me. The church give me hope. Yes. The church give me peace. The church give me joy. I remember back in the olden days when you used to spend all night praying. Yes, yes. That's my foundation. I dig deep. You know when someone be in a temporary house, they have to dig the foundation. Yes, house. yes, and yes. Spent, and it's when I said steel, not the tin steel. The strong steel they put in the steel in the building, and they have the column, they have the post. Yes. And all, and I'm lengthen and all those name to protect the building from mm. falling. Mm -hmm. And we are doing the word of God to protect the. Well, Feeling from falling. God, this is this God dressing with the sheep of his pastor. He's a good shepherd that laid on that for his sheep. And we say strong your word and stay close to God in terms of trouble. I'm getting you the word. You the word in the God. You the word. You our father. You will serve to the tree. You will serve to the one. And you can remember. Use it. Yes, that's right. Memorizing. Mm. In your brain, in your head, in your mind, yes. in your spirit. So when somebody said to you, your word, say some few words, you should be very glad about the day already. Do a song, you say one song already in your heart. A song, a word of scripture. Evil, our Father. Evil, Lord, my shepherd. Evil, Psalm to the tree. Psalm 1, I will tell my sin. But something have to keep you. And it's the word, it's not the food that keep us. It's not the bread and the hot dog and chicken and chip keep us. Man, the dog is food, man, and the word. Food, something that does make you fat. And the sickness. God is doing nowadays. They put that kind of chemical. Yes. True. They destroy the body and bring cancer and stroke at a time. And you name it. The food that we're eating, when God makes natural food, yes, we go back to natural thing, herb and herb and natural food, we are chemical and preservative. We are there getting richer, we are getting sicker. They are getting richer, richer, and you are dying every day. People are getting sick, we are getting disease. That's my few words. 
and God bless you. And thank you very much for giving me a chance to hear something. God bless you. Too. Amen. God bless you, Pastor, um, Pastor Winston. God bless you, um, Ms. Kelsey. I don't know if she's on now. Um, um, Sister Mother Mills, God bless you. And my son Delian is there as well. God bless you. Um, yes, um, you know, we're living in a dangerous time right now. Very, very dangerous time, you know. Because last night when I heard that they shot the president, I said, My God, what is yeah. next? What is next, my God? You know, it's really crucial. The devil is really on his last leg. And when, when, when we see all these things, we know, you know, because... America is supposed to be leading democ democracy, but if these things are happening, so-called democracy, what is expected of other countries? You know, yeah. and I'm um, just saying, it just shows us the time we're in now. And, you know, yeah. brethren, we, we just want to get close to God because the thing is, we don't know what is around the corner. None of us knows what is around the corner. Yes. Only God Almighty knows, but we know if we are in His, if we are holding it in hand, if we are in Him and He's in us, we know it doesn't matter what the devil threw at us. Because even we look in this very country we're in today, there's so much violence, you know, we're not seeing half of it because unless we have social media, we don't see half of what is going on the killing, the, um, the stabbing, the shooting, and all those. There's so much of it going on right now. But it shows that the devil is mad and we're in the last days. And many people we see, we don't know if they're possessed by demonic spirit. We don't know. We don't know. So the thing is, we have to stay close to the Lord because the Lord is, you know, the Lord is our deliverer. He's our, he, will, he will guide us. He will protect us. We can't go out on in our own strength. We have to go out in the strength of the Lord. David, when he was fighting against Goliath, he said, you come to me with prayer and sure, I come to you in the name of the Lord. When we go, we must go in the name of the Lord. We must walk in the name of the Lord. We must talk in the way of the Lord, in the, in the name of the Lord. Everything we must do, we must be in the Lord. So we know that we don't be careful, even though we're in danger. We are in dangerous times. There's no two words about it. It is not business as usual. We know that. So we need to hold close to God and we need to prove God day by day. We need to prove Him day by day. God wants us to prove Him day by day. Making our petition to Him and believe in him that he will come through it and he will so the good lord bless you all and have a wonderful week the god bless and keep you and continue to stand fast and trust in the lord because none that trust in the lord will ever be ashamed praise the name of the lord hallelujah I just want to have a short prayer. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I bless your holy name. Thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. Pray you will bless us and keep us, guide and protect us, Lord Jesus. We pray that you will give us courage to go forth trusting in you and that you will help us, Lord, to live a fearless life because we know with you we will never be ashamed. We will never be in doubt. We will never live in fear because Amen. you are the great God who created heaven and earth everything bowed down everything in the heaven everything on earth everything beneath the earth in the sea bowed down before you and you have total control and we love you we praise you we glorify you be with us we pray bless everyone that has joined us and lead us we pray in the name of jesus amen and amen god bless you brethren have a wonderful week in Jesus' name we pray, in Jesus' name. Now may the saving grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God, who has remained abide with us.